All right. So now the last, you know, speaker uh, for the session is uh, Mr. Samir Sangla, franchise manager, uh, ASP Johnson and Johnson. Samir heads advanced sterilization products in India and has several years of experience in bringing innovative and efficient infection prevention solutions to hospitals. With the passion to launch safe, compliant and cost effective solutions, he has worked with Johnson & Johnson in India, US and the Asia Pacific. Uh, just to let you know, you know, uh, this is probably one of the most neglected part, you know, in the hospital is the CSST, you know, uh, Samir. Uh, but it's the most vital. Most of the hospital acquired infection, you know, uh, are caught because you are not dealing with, you know, sterilized material. So let's hear from Samir, you know, how, what he has to share with us. So uh, good evening, everyone. I think it's getting a bit late in the day, and I'm running the last session. So what I'll try to do is try to make it as engaging as possible. We can have a lot more. Uh, the topic itself isn't the happiest topic, uh, which is about infection prevention and how we can reduce or make it more efficient to do infection prevention. But I think, as uh, Sir just mentioned, it's one of the most vital, and probably our understanding tends to be very, uh, very generic about that topic. So I'll quickly. Thank you. Thanks. So first of all, advanced sterilization products, we have uh, solutions for infection prevention. But I think the environment and the space that we are in is about cost reduction and in terms of making sure we have a lean healthcare setup. You all are involved, and I, I believe a lot of you come from architecture background. And you would be involved in designing spaces where infection prevention is a very critical element. And, uh, and I would be really keen to know how you think about infection prevention, but I'll give you some insights as to how we look at it. Okay. Let's start by first explaining what healthcare associated infection is. So imagine you go into a hospital and you are part of planning for a hospital. You're going for a hospital for some, uh, some ailment, some problem. But imagine that the hospital contributes to it by adding an infection on top of that, just because the hospital wants to give something as a return. And that is what healthcare associated infection is. There are four types of infections. And before I do that, uh, according to WHO, 15% is what they estimate emerging markets, um, a country like India would have as a rate of he healthcare associated infections. I think that's a really, really underestimate. So you can imagine all of us uh, go to hospital for nothing else, at least for the reason for childbirth. That's the, the only time that one has to go for the most happiest moments. But imagine one out of, and 25% is what I believe is the emerging markets rate roughly is, one out of four patients will actually come out with an infection that they never had when they went in. So that's how serious this problem is uh, in terms of in healthcare associated infections. There are four types of infections, but specifically today we'll talk about one, which is surgical site infection. And that is contributes to about 22% of all the infections in the hospital. Now, surgical site infection is anything, anytime our skin is the first, is the largest organ in our body, body and the organ which is the, the first line of defense for us. The minute we cut it, we are opening the, uh, any environmental infection, anything to uh, harm the body. And surgical site infection happens because the instruments are getting used to cut the body. And that instrument uh, needs to be properly cleaned and sterilized. And when we talk about sterilization, again, we have a lot of concept. We should wash it. We should use some uh, Dettol, we should use some other soap. No, there is a proper definition of what sterilization is, and that is that it is the destruction of all vegetative bacteria, fungi, viruses, uh, protozoans, and any other bacterial spore. Anything non-human needs to die uh, when you do sterilization. And that is the only way you can ensure that the patient will have some level of protection. But why are we failing? Well, first of all, we have failed. We need to accept it because one out of four patients is getting an infection. Why are we failing? And the reason for that is because one of the spaces that you guys might be designing and are uh, thinking about is central sterile department. I hope you just don't design it as a room. Let's make a room and let the hospital think about what you want to It is a very, very critical piece. It contributes to one out of four patients that go into hospital to actually get an infection. Not that the people inside CSSD are giving them infection, but they are not enabled to do the right thing. 
and the reason for that is that the CSSD is thought as a cost center. We talked about glass just now. You would not imagine most of the CSSDs are actually in the basement. There is no sunlight. Uh, most of the CSSDs don't think about these variations in glass and all these fancy stuff. They don't get anything. They get a small room. The last available space in a hospital is a CSSD, right? And again, putting back to the context, one out of four patients is going to get an infection because of that space. But no, we are not going to invest in it. It is a cost center, and it is widely perceived as a cost center. And I would encourage all of you to please change that mindset because uh, not just the patient impact of it, there are so many efficiencies that CSSD can bring to the hospital, which I'm going to talk about. We, our technology, which is plasma sterilization, uh, of any other methods of sterilization, whether it's steam, whether it's ETO, has significant advantages. And what we have, and I won't get into the detail of the technology at the end, I have a video to explain how the technology works, but how a plasma sterilization can help to change this perception about a CSSD is that if you use a plasma sterilizer, we have evidence that 58% of your instruments, which is a huge cost to, a cost, uh, to any hospital, the repair cost will go down and the frequency of repairs will go down. And the why is the case is because steam is extremely harsh on any instrument. So when you use plasma, which is a low temperature sterilization, there is no water usage, but there is no heat, heat usage. And because there is no heat usage, the repair costs are going down. Uh, that has additional benefits. First of all, you replace less. You don't have to keep on buying instruments every year, the same instruments. Uh, there are other advantages. You save on water. We were talking about green, uh, being green and being conservative about looking at the environment. There is only cassettes to be used. There is no water utilization in these technologies. And most importantly, energy. Uh, the energy consumption is 68% less than any steam sterilizers. The only difference is, yes, the chambers are less, smaller in size, so you need to run more cycles. Uh, the technology is more expensive. The each cycle cost is higher, but this data is factoring in all of that. So the, when we talk about cost efficiencies of 58% reduction in uh, risk to damage of instruments, 52% decrease in instrument reprocessing rate, uh, that much water and 68% decrease in energy consumption, there is evidence and published paper to prove that you make 6% return on investment on our technology versus what you do today over 10 year time frame. On any investment that you would make on a plasma sterilizer, you'll make 6% return on that investment by doing all these cuts and measures in place. And that's not it. Um, you do reduce your inventory. There are a lot of operational costs to inventory management in the hospital. Uh, you would be designing spaces for keeping instruments in a hospital or inventory somewhere. Uh, you reduce turnaround time leading to increase in OT efficiency. You can do more surgeries because the turnaround is only an hour versus four to five hours in, a, in the case of steam. There is no cool down time. Instruments come out cool itself. And most importantly, in a steam, you probably don't have that technology yet where every time you run a sterilization, you get a guarantee that that sterilization is sterilization. So that might be a counterintuitive con uh, concept. If I'm running a, st a sterilization cycle, the instrument should be sterilized. Well, that's not the case because there are a lot of variables. The water quality, for one. There are pressures. There are vacuum in the chamber. So like any other technology, it is not just that you put inside the instruments and the, we put our clothes in a washing machine. We assume it's washed. No, if you're not going to get a washing machine service once in a while, it's not going to be. If we don't use the right soap, it's not going to be washed. So those are the things that needs to be thought about that really, are we getting a sterile instrument? Are we just assuming it's sterile? Uh, which is contributing infection. Uh, and I think that is maybe beyond planning, but those are the factors which are the other benefits. So the question is, is it only cost or can CSSD contribute to the revenue of the hospital also? And I think the other data that I showed you was all US, but I'll show you Indian data. Uh, we have uh, an Indian hospital, 800 bedded Indian multi-speciality hospital in a metro uh, with 16 operation rooms and 50 surgeries a day. And they have a sterilizer for about two and a half years now. Uh, they run about eight cycles a day. How they have done is they have categorized the load that goes into the sterilizer. So a small pouch, large pouch, small tray, large tray, whatever goes into the sterilizer. They have categorized into multiple levels and they attach certain cost to it. And they pass that cost to the patient. And when they pass that cost, and the cost could be between 250 to 950 rupees, which goes and ch gets charged to the patient. If you look at the, for a, for a surgery like a lap coli or a hernia surgery, it would form about 2 to 3% of an average cost of a surgery. 
but for that 2 to 3% of the cost of the surgery, the patient is willing to pay, provided the patient should know that what the patient is willing to pay for. But if a, if a physician or a hospital is willing to communicate, we are giving you an assurance of a sterile instrument being used on you, the patient would be very comfortable to pay 2 or 3%, which is the, about 2 to uh, 2,500 rupees for, for the surgery, for sterilization of instrument. But when we talk about this, and this is a hospital which has done it very successfully, when we talk about this, the hospitals would, the first reaction would be, but that is, isn't that given? That we, are, we should be giving sterilized instrument. Why should a patient pay for it? Well, healthcare is also given. Why should we pay for healthcare? But that's not the point. We are, what we are paying for is that confidence of a sterile instrument and a confidence that I'm getting, uh, uh, I'm not going to get any infection from these instruments versus everything else that we do today. And uh, I don't know how much we all uh, have seen sterilization rooms. A lot of times sterilization is not done, especially on rigid telescopes which are heat sensitive. We would just probably put it in some high level disinfectant, some sort of a disinfectant and assume it's sterilized. So imagine the amount of risk that by paying that 2,500 rupees patients are coming out of. So CSSD can be a revenue center also. So with that, I think I've gone through the, uh, the efficiencies and uh, operational benefits. Let me just show you what we have in terms of the latest technology that now we are bringing to efficient CSSDs. There is audio in this if you can play. So this is the machine. This is how the machine would look like. It has about 150 liter chamber. It has an IP, iPad type of a touch screen. An operator can put the username, login, so you know which operator has run which cycle. I need the mic. Uh, it would show all the cycles in that sterilizer. Also shows to an operator what you need to do now. A lot of time, a training cost are very high for operators in the CSSDs. This will tell you exactly which cycle you should be running on for this kind of load. This is a biological indicator. The machine will also inform you need to charge the biological indicator. Don't run a cycle assuming it will be sterile. The barcode reader will automatically read the, the biological indicator, so later you don't have to do any manual bookkeeping. Uh, you will open the chamber, you will put the load in. Uh, it will tell you exactly how to place the load, so the operator again doesn't have to be confused what to do. You put the load, you put the biological indicator in. The cycle is designed in a way that if there is a moisture in the chamber, it will detect it, and actually some level of moisture can also be removed by the machine itself. This is the latest because earlier we didn't have that capability. The cycle runs for about 45 minutes, and once the cycle is over, it's really big, so operators from anywhere in the CSSD can see, you know, the cycle is done, so we need to now go and get it out. There will be a clear message. This message will also come to your mobile phones, by the way, if you're not there. Uh, there will be a clear message, the biological indicator taken out. This is the reader. So this is the latest readers, not the old kind of readers where you have to send it to the mic uh, microbiology. The reader has a barcode scanner which will automatically tag this biological indicator to that load. And that information, again, uh, the operator can put in so that tomorrow, if there is any infection outbreak, you can track what happened, which load, which, in, uh, which kind of instrument, why was the biological indicator not used. So people can be held accountable if there is an infection. Uh, you would charge the biological indicator and put it in the machine. The beauty is that now we can do uh, biological indi identification in 30 minutes, which used to take 24 hours. In 30 minutes, you have a validation. This is the latest, again, this is of reconciliation of data. While the biological indicator is reading the uh, indication whether this, uh, the load was sterile, the information from the machine and biological indicator will go into a computer. You'll have record of each and every cycle that you have run. And it, would, it can store the life of the machine is 10 years, so it will store all the data that you ever wanted to store. For each and every patient, you can run a cycle. For each and every audit you ever had for NABH and JCI, you can tell them that here, here I have the data, on that day I run this cycle. And this same information is available to you if you have multiple machines, Apollo, any big hospital has multiple machines across India. The administrator can sitting at his home see for each and every machine what is the cycle, how many cycles have been done, how many biological indicators have failed. So the amount of accountability and record keeping is very, very, first of all, accountability is very high and there is no record keeping to be done manually. Everything is automated. Everything is on cloud. Everything is over your mobile phones and everything is, except the operator has to pick up the load, properly packet it, put it inside, take it out, put it in the shelf. And that's where I think the designing of the spaces could look very different once these kind of technologies are bought, which is readily available. We just launched it two months back. So that's about it. I think uh, that's, the, that's the latest we have. 
the old generation of those massive chambers and trolleys and all that stuff I think is a time of past. Uh, linen is always going to be an issue, we can't do linen. But uh, outsourcing of linen sterilization, I think one of the panelists, uh, one of the speakers has talked about it. It's about time we move to the next level. I think it's, uh, linen is a very age old concept. A lot of developed countries have moved away. It's really not a, a very efficient way to manage um, uh, the operations in a hospital. But we don't deal in linen, we can't do sterilization of linen in these chambers. It would still require steam. And uh, besides that, everything else can be done in, in uh, sterile low temperature plasma sterilizers. So that's uh, hopefully something that gives you an insight into what is happening in CSSD world. The room probably you should think a little more about. Uh, happy to take questions if you have any. Yeah. Please. It's about 100. So the use of a chamber would be about 100 liters. Uh, to put things in perspective, you can easily have two to th three surgery load in one chamber in one time. No, I mean to say that, say for 100 bed hospital, what will be the size of the machine? Uh, this machine? Uh, this machine is as big as this, uh, as big as this, and, and about a height of this, six. Nothing else will be required. Nothing is just plug and play. So I think you have not mentioned uh, that uh, the size of the CSD room, uh, matlab, complete planning will Absolutely. come down, and the reflection of that in the cost of per square feet area. I totally agree with you. Uh, uh, that actually, is a very important thing, which uh, while designing, when you said that uh, uh, CSD is the last thing and put in the corner and all that. No, absolutely, and you're right. And the studies actually factor in the cost of maintenance of boilers. So especially Japan, where there's a lot of earthquake, the boiler maintenance cost is very high. So a lot of hospitals have forcefully stopped putting st uh, sterilizers because of the steam sterilizers because of boiler cost. Uh, to your point, uh, there is a huge amount of infrastructural cost on that, and the space required for steam sterilizers. This will totally take care of that. And we have, and I think these are the kind of things that we are. Um, getting better at communicating, we need to do more of. But um, today, uh, it's a very, it's a plug and play machine as big as this podium as well. How many of such uh, units get uh, integrated into the hospital, depending on the size, depending on the operation theaters? Uh, is there some standardization that these many units have to be there? Uh, how, how is that? So typically, see, uh, what we believe is that uh, we have, first of all, we have different uh, sizes of machines available. We have smaller machines, we have this size, and we have a larger size machine available. The next is when we, when any of these conversations start, it starts by understanding what is their instrument type, what kind of surgeries they are running, uh, where would be the maximum return on investment for the hospital. And when all of that analysis is done, then we present a proposal to the management that this size will make sense for you at this cost, and these are the kind of returns you can get. So uh, all that analysis is done up front. Uh, it depends on, of course, the number of cycles you would run. It would depend on how many surgeries you have, how do you schedule your surgeries. It would depend, like I said, on the type of instrumentation load also you have. The hospital would probably have to keep lesser inventory of some uh, rigid telescopes. So that kind of planning is done up front. It's a part of the conversation. So on an average on a day, uh, on one single day, how many such slots can take place continuously? If you our, uh, the machine which runs the most cycle runs to about 14 to 15 cycles a day. It runs non-stop 24-7. Uh, because each cycle is about 45 minutes. So the only time wasted is the time taken to put the load and taken out. So that machine runs non-stop. And our machines are like tanks. They don't, and we have a very, very elaborate service system. So our machines run non-stop. Uh, but on an average, I would say a hospital would run a machine four to five cycles a day. Probably and, not more than the that. the energy cost when you are doing steam sterilization to this one, what is the? So I don't have the numbers back of me right now, but it is easily uh, steam and ETO, both versus this would be 1 to 10, 1, one is to 10. Okay. Huge difference in energy. In what? Oh, I just said that linen as a, as a material cannot be sterilized in plasma. Uh, yeah. That's a limitation of plasma. So for linen, you would still require either some sort of a steam sterilizer or an outsource uh, sterilization mechanism. Uh, what I've meant is that a lot of places in the world are evaluating whether we should go disposable and linen free. I don't know if there is a jury out on that, but I think the, uh, the what I see is, is a trend away from linen or outsourcing of linen sterilization. No, it's not cost efficient. We have your sterile 
and ETO and the autoclave. Sure. And we use all the three. And you have your limitations with long tubes. We yes. use your steroid only for precious instruments and diamond knives and uh, tungsten uh, scissors and all those things. Sure. For other things, we still use ETO and autoclave only. So you should not use ETO. That's what I'm trying to, uh, I mean, at least the evidence is that in your specific account, I hope that uh, maybe we can spend some time with you and understand how can we change your mind. The purse. So I think, you have uh, to change uh, the yeah, so uh, once, even, once we are through with, you know, his felicitation, I think you can talk to him offline. Yeah. <laughs> Any other question? Uh, we do regular preventive maintenances twice a year. Uh, twice. But if a machine breaks down for some reason, then we will immediately service it. And like how much time does it take for servicing? A couple of hours. Only a couple of hours? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what is the price range for this, like smallest and the largest one? So it would, on an average, a machine would be around 55 to 60 lakhs. But it could range depending on the size. Okay. Uh, could be lower end, 40 to 60, yeah. 70. And this product is manufactured in India or the parts are from like outside Everything India? is made in US. Uh, US. We don't have any manufacturing of this. Uh, the consumables, everything is made in US. So like in case if some defects happen, so parts will be brought from US. We okay. have a local, we have a servicing pipeline of uh, about uh, 10 service engineers across India. We have our service infrastructure. Our service I think that should not worry us. There are many, you know, such equipment which are manufactured outside India but serviced, you know, uh, in India. And most of the cars also are like that so yeah so you yeah. should not worry about that yeah. okay. all right so uh, yeah. i think if it if that is the cost you know uh, personal opinion i'm not you know uh, not the marketing person for j and j but that cost actually is quite good because the end result if you get what he has said that's you know worth the investment you know and, and dr asokan probably has done the right choice uh, They're good for precious scissors, precious yeah. knives, diamond knives. So what he's saying is good for the other stuff also, sir, not to worry so about all it. The, all the, uh, but the cost of running it is not as running high. Cost, the uh, operational costs are prohibitively, I mean, not for the... So that's what he's operation. trying to say that it is sir, not. I'll connect with you offline. We'll discuss the cost. <laughs> Any other, you know, question? So I will just like to, you know, uh, what he's asked. This has been, you know, mo most of them have this problem. Where is, you know, you, pro you projected that uh, the running cost is not that high. He says, you know, the running cost is high and hence it is, he's not using. Am I right? No, no. Is the running cost high? That is why you're not using Definitely it? Definitely the running cost between the other alternatives that we have been having and this one is, he, he'll understand that. So I tell you the, the, the gap. The gap is because uh, if you use uh, Sterard versus Steam, and if you see the running cost only one month or two months, then of course it will not match. But if you take the return on investment over the life of the machine, it will give you returns, a higher returns on investment, and you will save money, which is what the published evidence is. And in fact, this is as recently as uh, three months old evidence that we have. Now, we can look at your data and see why that is not adding up. But we have uh, researched this in multiple hospitals. There is only one more area, sir, I will point out. This data comes from US where everything is done by the book. Now, we have to agree that all the instruments which need to be sterilized are sterilized in an environment like US. The question that we don't know is if an instrument is not going in steam because it's heat sensitive and it's not going in sterard, and it's also not going in ETO, then what is happening in terms of sterilization of that instrument? And I think in India, we have noticed there's a lot of that gap that we can't define the cost on because the cost of that is so low that there is no way Sterart can match that cost. If this instrument is being soaked in glutraldehyde or being put in alcohol and put in the next patient, we will not be able to be cost effective. But then what are we saying is that even water is good enough, even not sterilizing is also good enough then. And I think that's where the debate is. Uh, when hospitals look at us and say, your equipment is very expensive, if they do the right thing, it will be cheaper. No, the thing is, <clears throat> in the US, when it compares, compared to the US, 
where you spend somewhere around 15 to 16 or 17 percent of the GDP as your health care expenditure and mostly met by the insurance companies that's okay in a country where you are expenditure is less than 2 percent, 1.6, 1.7 percent of your GDP and where out of pocket payments are there and you, every patient negotiates with you for is containing the cost and all where you cannot dispense with your linen and he is talking about disposables. That is just not possible in Indian hospitals for the next decade. No, fair enough, sir. I think yeah. disposable could be quite far. So, it, uh, it, yeah. if it is not possible for some decade, some of them will start using in a year or two. No, no, we have been using it for the past 20, 20, 20 years at least. I have been using disposable uh, drapes, 20 years at least. But that doesn't mean all the patients we use it. And so, uh, sir, we'll sir. have to maintain the alternatives. And when, wherever it's possible, we maintain the, uh, use the cheaper alternative. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, you know, Samir. Uh, so I would like to call upon uh, Mr. Vikas Witch, you know, MD IDEX, to felicitate Samir.